Hello everyone, welcome to episode 85 of the Cherry Heart podcast. I'm Sandra and this is a crafty crochet and knitting and sometimes sewing podcast. Um, you can find the show notes for this episode on my blog which is cherryheart.co.uk just click the podcast tab at the menu at the top um, or you can use the link in the down bar if you're watching on YouTube. You can also find me around the web as Cherry Heart and I'm Sandra Cherry HRT on Instagram. So hello everyone, how are you? Um, we're okay, I'm glad to say. Um, yeah, where do I even begin? <laughs> Since the last time we spoke, it feels like things have changed quite dramatically. Um, and probably they have for you too, because this is sort of affecting us all over the world, isn't it? If you're tuning into this in the future, you know, if you're going back and looking at some of my older podcasts, what I'm talking about now is the coronavirus. Um, yeah, and how it's, you know, we're in the midst of it spreading all over the world and the world just trying to cope with it. Just for some context about why I'm sort of, I don't know, <laughs> saying possibly strange things. There's very strange things going on for normal times. It's not like normal times. But, as I'm sure you are, we're all kind of trying to pretend as much as we can that it is really. Or at least we have a new normal. Actually I'm alright with that because we're um we've started homeschooling this week from Monday and um so we're carrying on in our new normal so we're still getting up, we're still you know sticking to some kind of structure for working through the lessons and getting everything done and yeah but at the same time so that's the new normal and we're trying to keep that as sort of structured and part of a routine as possible so that we can you know it seems like the best way to cope with that and that seems to be working all right once we're getting our head around it all but doing actual normal things like me coming up here and podcasting today that feels really quite strange to be honest with you <laughs> it feels like I don't know if I shouldn't be doing it I don't know it just feels like you should be doing something more I don't know I don't know how to explain myself it just feels strange doing genuinely real normal things where most of the time we're sort of trying to impose or normality over something that's quite odd but in the situation that almost feels more acceptable than actually doing normal things there we are, another succinct and clear explanation by Sandra, the kind of quality of concise speech that you expect from me. I don't know if any of you followed any of that, <laughs> but hopefully you know where I'm coming from. But yeah, I think we're all doing our best to try and carry on as best we can, can't we, with the various restrictions we have in place. Um, I don't know what it's like where you are, we've kind of got a pretty, a pretty much locked down here. We have to stay home as much as possible. Um, we can leave for one form of exercise, so you can go out for a walk or a run or a bike ride, so one form of exercise a day. So we're going out for our dog walk, that's ours, for the day. And then you can leave to get food and emergency supplies, you know, medicine and such. Um, yeah, so other than that, everyone's pretty much staying at home, really you know, unless they're obviously a key worker, um, we're not, so, and my husband is able to do his work from home, um, so although he's in a key working sector, the bit that he does isn't considered key work, so he's okay to work from home. Um, yeah, it's all weird, but it shall pass, um, we shall get through it, and, um, Let's change the subject, let's talk about other things, because, um, yeah, 
I don't know, it's just good to take your mind off these things, isn't it? And everyone's talking about it, so sometimes it's nice to have an escape. I know quite a few people are doing, I think they're doing daily vlogs, aren't they? I just haven't even had a chance to look at any podcasts or vlogs or anything. But I know um, my lovely friend Catherine of Craft and Treats is doing one. And Ali of uh, Little Drops of Wonderful is doing one. And I think maybe Gainer of Tales from Cuckoo Land. She's certainly got some vlogs up, I don't know if she's doing daily, but... Like I say, I haven't really had a chance to check out what anyone's doing. We've been coping with what we've got going on ourselves, I suppose, for a minute. But, um, yeah. Again, see, I'm being sucked into talking about it. Let's move on. Let me show you what I've been doing. Um, oh, I've just popped in on to say that I think I've got a little bit of vlog stuff. So I'm just going to bung that at the end. Um... I've just recorded this podcast and it's quite short, so this seems like a good place to put a bit of vloggy stuff on the end. Um, yeah. So I'll let you get back to the podcast. Okay, bye. Because <laughs> I think I've got mostly done things. I haven't got much on the go. So the first done thing is something you've seen already. So that's a quickie. And let's talk about those. So these are my bunny socks. So these are the Little Rabbit Socks by Lovely Jewels of So Sweets Violet. Um, I think they're called her little, little Rabbit Pattern, I'm pretty sure. I'll put the link in my show notes, so, uh, you know, to my project page so you can get to all the information. I'm calling them my Easter bunny socks, so they've got their little bunny tails on, which are super cute. And I think last time I'd sort of, maybe I turned the heel on them. I was having trouble with my colour arrangement, but this is what I've settled on. This one's quite bright compared to the others, but I kind of like it. I kind of like the foot, covering up this bit, the foot better than the leg for colour, for colours, but there we go. But yeah, pretty happy with this, how they turned out in the end. Um, these are mostly um, minis that I got from Herb's Black Regina, um, Regina from Herb's Black Regina, um, who doesn't die anymore. And then I've just got a couple of, that's a Vicky Brown one, and this was, I'm not sure what that one was. It might, I was going to say Nora George, but I don't think it is actually. Oh, I might have got that in an advent actually, I'm not quite sure what that is. It might have been in an advent swap. Yes, but there you go, very much liking those. love this little stitch detail that Jules put in. That's really pretty and I'm loving the little tails too and I forgot the ones on the cuff but never mind. So that's done and then the other thing that I've finished that you've seen is this. So Oh, I forgot to bring the I mean, original shawl up again. I've talked about this before though, so if you've been before, I won't bore you again. But basically I had a shawl which had this kind of motif on it and I've recreated it in crochet. Um, someone sent me a link to a picture they found in an old fashioned book where it was sort of showing loops being pulled up around a sort of cardboard circle. So to make this circle in the middle. Um, and then they're somehow, I don't know how they secured the middle, but basically they had a cardboard, like you know the cardboard circles you make, that you use to make pom-poms where they've got a little circle in the middle and a big round bit of cardboard. And they were obviously working into the circle in the middle and pulling up yarn to make like a really long extended crochet, I suppose, and just worked like that around the circle. That looked like how the original shawl could have been made using maybe that technique. It would explain how they got a nice round circle. But anyway, I've just uh, recreated the motif using regular old crochet stitches because I didn't know how to do that other technique. And I've made, I've put them on point and I've joined them all together to make this small strip which is going to go on top of my, at the top of my kitchen window. It needs a bit of a block actually, it's slightly crinkly. 
And I was going to put on each of these points, I was going to put a tassel, but I think it will just, I think it's just going to pull them down and distort it too much if I put a tassel on there. So I've decided I think I'll just leave it as that. So yeah, I just need to hang that now. I've got a sort of dodgy blind up there at the moment. So I need to get that down and then hang this somehow. So I might need some supplies before I can hang that. So that may have to wait until after the uh, the duration of our confinement um, <laughs> till I can go out and get some supplies for that. But I really like the design. And I still haven't totally given up on the idea of a bedspread in this because I love it. I love it so. Um, so yeah, so the motif was based, uh, the design for the motif was based on a vintage shawl from my lovely nanny. And then I've just sort of created a half square version to fill in the gaps. And then I've literally just done a row of crochet all the way around the edge. I just sort of did a little loop. And that bit but most of it is just double crochets or single if you're in America and then I just did a slightly wider bit at the top because I'll use that to hang it and that's it and the yarn I used is let's get you one with the label on oh, no, it's falling apart let's see if I can rearrange it so it doesn't look quite so shabby for you it's the Starcraft Naturals bamboo and cotton which is their new yarn. Um, I spoke about this last time, but I really love this, but it just, it feels amazing. And that's another reason why I want it as bedspread because this has got such beautiful drape, it would make a gorgeous bedspread. But I've just made a white bedspread, so I don't really need to do that again. Even though I really want to. <laughs> yes. Um, I'm hoping when I do eventually get it up, I'll pop, um, I'll show you, you know, it in place. I'm hoping that the sun will sort of shine through the window and, you know, that hanging up in the window and that'll look all, all pretty, I'm hoping. So I'll see if I can capture some photographic evidence of that when it eventually occurs. Um, and then the other thing I've just quickly whipped up is a few more of my pine cloth pine cone dish cloths or cloths. I'm going to use these ones uh, in the bathroom in actual fact. I just wanted some in my bathroom colours. I had the, um, this is the Rikurumi cotton DK, the little sort of 25 gram balls and I'd got some in my bathroom colours to use um, and I'd made some up as gifts a little while ago but I hadn't actually made the ones for myself so I've made a set of those and then I've just used the leftovers to make the little puffs so I've got a set of those in my bathroom colours as well sort of greeny and blue bathroom colours um, as you can see I haven't actually blocked that but I might just start using them to be honest because there's no point making them wet when I'm about to make them wet when I'm using them, is there really? But yes, so I was glad to get that done. They will look pretty in my little glass jars in my bathroom. Now, um, so those are all my finishes. And then my patterns in progress, I'll just talk about this that I have laid out here. I spoke about it before. Um, it's my Bright Star blanket. Um... And just to let you know, the pattern is out. When I spoke about it last time and showed it all that I'd finished it, um, I hadn't actually got the pattern out. But now it is out. I know a load of you have gone along and brought it already, so thank you very much for that. Um, but just if you're waiting, because I did promise I would announce it here on the channel as well, but if you are waiting for that to come out, it is now out. Um, I'll put the link to it in show notes, of course, and you can pop along to get that. It's available on Ravelry and on Lovecrafts and you've got a choice of using UK terms or US terms. Um, I think that's all you need to know about it. I did put all the sort of helpful tutorial information on sort of finishing the border and everything as well so you know pictures and stuff in there so hopefully that's all fine. Um, so that's my pips. Well, it's not a pattern in progress, is it? It's a pattern that's finished. 
haven't got a haven't got an acronym for that. <laughs> um, and as for next patterns in progress, I haven't really thought about it. I have got a sock pattern that's been hanging around that I probably need to get out, so I might do that. It's my pearly dot socks. Um, but yeah, I don't know at the minute. I haven't got a lot of headspace for for that kind of carrying on at the moment. So what I am doing though, this is my only whip on the go at the moment, is this one, which doesn't look like anything much, does it? Let's see if I can show it to you. So that's it the right way up. Um, it's a v-neck. It's quite scrunched up on the needles, as you can see. Um, let's show you a picture of the finished pattern. I think, I think this. I don't think I'd started this last time. I podcast. I think I might have started talked about the idea that I wanted to do it. So there it is. It's called the Understated. It's by Hokey Locatelli. It's very similar to her kind of boxy jumper designs, um, but this one's in DK weight. So the box, the original boxy is in fingering full ply. And then I think she did an Aran weight one. So this is kind of like a DK weight one, although I guess I think I think the actual boxy's got longer sleeves, and I don't know if it's got has it got such a big V neck? I don't know. So it's not the same, but it's sort of it's still a very it's got that sort of uh, you know, very oversized kind of thing going on. I just really liked it and in the picture, this is obviously black and white, but in the picture it's very dark, very dark charcoal colour which I really liked as well. So I kind of just went for exactly the same kind of thing. Um, I've been working on it quite a while, um, up until the last sort of week or so when everything went a bit crazy and then I have slowed down a bit. But it's now I've um, I, last night I finally joined to work in the round, and um, I think it'll be good now because that's what I want—just soothing round and round stitches. Not that anything's been complicated it before be, about it before now. It seems uh, quite straightforward, but yeah, I was just looking forward to that really mindless thing, and then maybe once I've got that into the really mindless stitching zone I'll be able to contemplate starting something else because like I say I haven't really had the headspace to even think about anything else at the moment. But so this is the yarn I'm using. Um, it's Sublime Extra Fine Merino Wool Double Knit and the shade is 0018 and there's 116 metres to 50 grams. Um, it recommended needle size is four millimeters, which is the same as it is in the pattern, but I've gone up a size. I'm doing four point five because I tend. I seem to find with garments, I'm starting to veer towards just automatically going up a size before I start because it just seems to work out better. I think. I guess my gauge sort of errs on the side of slightly tighter. Or at least it does when I start. I find I tend to loosen up a bit during the project, which is a bit annoying. <laughs> um, yeah, but I figured with an oversized thing, my this was my thinking, if it's oversized anyway, rather than have it smaller and take away some of the, um, what's it called? when it's oversized positive ease yes rather than take away some of the positive ease I'd rather sort of err slightly on the larger size I figure a little bit tight a little bit more positive ease won't hurt whereas if I lose a lot of positive ease that's going to affect how it looks so that was my thinking behind it so um yeah I'm quite happy with the gauge I am getting to be honest if if I was on a four it'd feel really tight this feels like a really fat DK certainly wouldn't have wanted it on the fourth set, not the way I'm knitting it anyway. I don't know, maybe I've tightened up. Maybe it's the stress of it all and I'm uh, really tight. I don't know. <laughs> don't feel like that, but maybe I am. 
yeah. Anyway, I think I've measured my gauge and um, it's not too far off as I am, so I'm sure with a bit of blocking that will be just about perfect. Um, so that's what I have done. Um, patterns in progress I've talked, no, that's what I'm doing. Oh my goodness, I'm all over the place. I've shown you what I've done, I've shown you what I'm doing. I've talked about my patterns in progress. The only other thing is really incoming goodies, which I don't have any of, apart from the yarn to do this. Of course, I did get that. Um, yeah, I don't think I've got anything else lately, which is fine because I really must work on using up these. That's my next, I, what I should be doing is I should be thinking of project work on next that uses up some of this. That's, that's what I should be doing. I find it a little bit hard to settle on sort of crafty things. I think that's mostly because I, mostly because I haven't had the brain space to think about it a little bit, I suppose. But also we've kind of thrown ourselves into like housey projects a bit. I think certainly last weekend, sort of kind of before the lockdown proper started. Um, yeah, we were kind of doing gardening and house things and it, I think it was just sort of a way of us going, right, let's keep our brains full with this so we don't have time to think about anything else, which kind of worked quite well actually. So I've had a bit of a shuffle in here. This end stayed the same, but there's a bit of a shuffle gone on in the other end. And um, hubby, who is in my old craft room in the house, the little room in the house, that's sort of his office stroke, a bit of a storage area. We're sort of having a bit of a sort out and shuffle round up there as well. And lots of things that we've been meaning to do for a long time and sort of haven't got round to. Suddenly we've gone, well, oh, let's think about that. Let's do that now. And um, yeah, that's kind of worked quite well, actually. When your mind's full of that, you can't think too much about everything else that's going on <laughs> because you can't control that um, or do anything about that so so yeah so we've been keeping busy like that and then and now we're sort of in this kind of you know we know what our routine is going to be for the sort of next well three weeks at least possibly longer in a way it sort of feels a lot calmer because we've we're just doing what we can do now, which is, you know, we've been given quite clear guidelines on what that is. So, yeah, once we settle into this new normal routine, I'm hoping, like, you know, my some of that creative feeling will start to perhaps seep back in. But it's nice to have something soothing to do in the meantime. I really kind of want to start a blanket, actually, just because working on the rows of a blanket is almost the most rhythmic and soothing thing but I don't know we'll have to see anyway I hope you are keeping well stay safe everyone look after yourselves and um, yeah we'll get through this and um, yeah we'll use our lovely making to help us cope with it as we always do all right then, lovelies see you next time bye bye